Well, this morning we have uh, a special guest ministering to us. Um, John Mason with Word to Life Theater Ministries will be with us. And you'll see that it is a ministry. It's not like, oh, we have a filler and there's going to be a play and it's going to be kind of fun. Like he's going to minister to us. God's going to work in him and through him to share with us about Jesus, the Word come to life. So uh, let's welcome John Mason as he presents Emmanuel, the Christmas Promise. this piece of driftwood on the Galilean shores and I thought it was just the right shape. What do you think? Of course, you cannot tell what it is I am making. Here, just a small addition. It is one of our fishing boats that sails the Galilean waters. Who's it for? It is for that boy who lives down the road. You know the carpenter Joseph and his wife Mary? Their son, Jesus. He journeys down to the waters to watch me hauling in my nets even help sometimes. Well, not having any children of my own, I thought perhaps I would make him a small gift. He has had quite an adventurous life for one so young. Oh yes, I've heard many stories about our Jesus. You would like to hear some of those stories. I do not want to keep you from your work, you. but I have heard some wonderful, almost unbelievable tales of angels, shepherds, learned men, of visitations, journeys and escapes, of life and death. Did I mention angels? God, here I am. You called. It's Gabriel, your messenger with a mission, your promoter of peace, your voice in the wilderness, your angelic host with the most, your... <coughs> yes, I'm through. So, what can I do for you? your almighty omnipotence, your supreme celestialness, your majestic hugeness, <coughs> your divine beingness, your... <laughs> yes, I know I get carried away. Yes, I know the other angels call me Gabriel the Gab. <laughs> So, what can I do you for? <laughs> You're going to visit Earth. Ooh. I love it when we drop in for a visit. <laughs> like when you did that burning bush thing with Moses. <laughs> I can still see the look on his face. <laughs> You're standing on holy ground. 
I never saw sandals fly off feet so fast. <laughs> and when you spoke to Balaam through his ass, not just a voice. In person this time. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Won't that be too much for them? Remember, you had to hide Moses in a cleft in a rock and cover him with your hand because no one may see me and live. And he still blowed for days after. You're going to appear in a different form in disguise. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> hey, I could make you a cape just like mine. <laughs> you want to appear low-key, <laughs> incognito. <laughs> well, I could make it shiny in only one side. <laughs> so, why on earth are you going to Earth? <laughs> you want to save the world because it has turned from your original design of abundant life and is mired in rebellious sin which will lead to destruction? Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. Lucifer. That prince of darkness. That master of deception. That purveyor of manipulation. That serpent of death. That, that <clears throat> I always said you shouldn't have made him choir director. It went right to his head. <laughs> or is that his tail? <laughs> so, let me get this straight. You plan on making a unique visitation to Earth to replace fear and greed with forgiveness and grace. Right. I'll arrange things at the king's castle. <laughs> I'll have the new choir director write a symphony. Uh, I'll set up a, a marketing blitz in all the surrounding towns and cities announcing your coming. <laughs> I can see the headlines now. The Lord saves. Hmm? How about the Messiah has landed? <laughs> the Almighty appears. <laughs> or even... <laughs> The Holy Ghost sets fire to no castle. Oh, okay. No symphony. Oh, it would have. No marketing blitz. Well, how? You what? You're going to appear as a human baby? But, good Lord, your thunder, lightning, wind, rain, your war, not. <laughs> okay, just give me a moment. I'm thinking. Um, well, what if. Oh, that won't work. Oh, you could always. Too big. A myth. Oh, I got it. How about I arrange for you to be born? into a rich, upstanding family. Rome. The Romans, as you know, are the leading civilization, expanding their empire across the whole world, exercising vision, order, power. You would be in a position of influence and stature. Oh, the masses would have no choice but to listen to you. You want to start your human life by being born in a stable to a poor, recently betrothed teenage Jewish virgin in a small town in Judea. But your most royal highness, at least choose a, a princess in a palace, no. in a cosmopolitan no. city like Jerusalem. No palace. Yeah. How about a nice red carpet? You know, such a momentous occasion, which is going to split history into two parts. You're playing it rather conservatively. Aren't you taking a risk? I mean, they might not believe you. Are you sure this is going to work? You're willing to bet your life on it. Great. I can hear it now. 
For God so loved the world. <laughs> okay, I can see you really have your heart set on this thing. <laughs> but why don't you consider postponing it for a few thousand years? <laughs> I'm working on this concept for a thing called the World Wide Web. <laughs> you can shoot emails off to billions of people in a split second. Tell them of your coming. You can do weekly e-bulletins, almighty announcements. <laughs> Everybody on Facebook would want you as a friend. <laughs> you just want me to tell a few people, including a group of shepherds, and let them take it from there. Fine. Can I at least wear my cape? <laughs> oh, hey, I've got this idea for a star, see, that moves across the sky. And that, my friends, is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, God with us. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary. Stable, behind, straw, warm, safe. No room. 
room in the end. That night, the time came for the baby to be born. And Mary gave birth to her first son, a son. And they gave him the name Jesus. Yahshua, which means Yahweh is salvation. Messiah in Hebrew. Christ in Greek. The anointed. Mary wrapped him in cloths and lay him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. The first to learn of Jesus' birth was an unlikely group encamped on a hill just outside of town. Well, I was sitting on the edge of the hill, watching over the flocks by night. We had the flocks grazing down Hebron way, and we're working our way back towards Bethlehem. <laughs> That's where the best grass is that time of year. We had some problems with wolves attacking our sheep, so we were being particularly diligent, taking turns, keeping watch. <laughs> it was my turn. There was a nice roaring fire. The other shepherds were fast asleep, wrapped in their cloaks. <laughs> Mac was a snoring, woo, doggy. He's the best cook among us. He can carve a fine rack of lamb. So I like to call him Mac the Knife. Anyway, as I was saying, Mac was a snoring so loudly. I'm sure no wolf and ten legs would dare come near. I was putting another branch on the fire when all of a sudden a bright light floods the hill. I'm talking bright. Like someone lit a whole grove of dry cedar trees on fire. What's that? I yelled, shaking Mac and the others awake. Just then the shiny dude, later I realized it was an angel, Burst through the middle of the light, does a couple of flips, and hum is in the air, right in front of us. Sparks are shooting out of his hair and everything. <laughs> I think he was kind of showing off. <laughs> anyway, he starts speaking, do not be afraid. Afraid? Afraid nothing. I don't mind telling you, I was terrified. Then he said, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Woo! I could do with some good news right about then. <laughs> Today in the town of David, oh, that's Bethlehem for you foreigners, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. The Messiah, Mac. Mac! Did you hear that? The long-awaited Messiah has arrived. <laughs> Mac? This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. A baby. <laughs> shiny guys. A great company of the heavenly host appeared, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. Woo! Dog it! <laughs> well, when the
when the angels have left and gone into heaven and Mac had crawled out from under the sheep, I said to Mac and the others, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. <laughs> now, I may be slow about some things, but I got that message loud and clear. So we left the sheep to fend for themselves and headed off down the valley into town where we found Mary and Joseph and the little baby lying in the manger. When we came rushing into the barn, the baby Messiah kind of gurgled at us like he was saying, Welcome! <laughs> Mac thought he was just passing the wind. Anyway, after we'd seen him, we spread the word concerning all that had been told us about this child. Now, I know that we shepherds are a pretty wild and grubby bunch. We're not about helping ourselves to the dates and grains from private fields when no one is watching. <laughs> so I can understand that the town folk were skeptical about what we told them. But all who heard it were amazed at what me, Matt, and the other shepherds said to them. We returned to our sheep, glorifying and praising God for all the things we'd heard and seen which were just as that shiny angel dude had told us. Anyway, now, to keep me awake, while I'm watching over the flocks by night, I sing this little song. Join me now. They're not shepherds for today I bring tidings of a newborn king. You'll find them in a barn, you'll be amazed, telling good news all over the place, singing, God will, God will save you. God will, God will save you. Yes. Friends, I am told that that night, and for many days after, Joseph and Mary and their little baby received countless visitors as the news spread. On the eighth day, Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When Joseph and Mary brought in the child Jesus to present him to the Lord, Simeon, took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Jesus' father and mother marveled at what was said about him. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phenuel of the tribe of Asher. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Returning to live in Bethlehem, Joseph and Mary continued to receive visitors from near and far. Uh, among those visitors were some learned men, magi, who had traveled from the east.
Have you ever carried a heavy chest through sun, sand, wind, and cold following a star? <laughs> My fellow countrymen said I was crazy. Not very wise, man, they said. Whoever follows a star, they said, he'll get an awful crink in his neck, they said. Likely to be robbed of his treasure, they said. Messiahs do not just appear, they said. Herod won't be happy, they said. They were right. It was crazy. And dangerous. But after being in the presence of that special family, I knew that I had followed the right course. You see, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, we traveled from the east to Jerusalem and asked all whom we met, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. He called together all the people's chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called us Magi secretly and found out the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent us to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too can go and worship him. After we had heard him, we went on our way, and the star went ahead of us until it stopped over the place where the child was. On seeing the star, we were overjoyed. On coming to the house, we saw the child with his mother Mary, and we bowed down and worshipped him. Then we opened our treasures and presented them with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Having been warned in a dream not to go back to here, we returned to our country by another route. Only this time, my neck was not so sore, <laughs> and my chest was empty. Would you like to hear what happened next, my friend? angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph got up, took Jesus and Mary during the night, and left for Egypt, where they stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord said through the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious and gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. But Jesus was safe 
because his family had been obedient and escaped to Egypt. Now, my friends, something that not many people know is that while they were living in Egypt, Joseph wrote a letter home to his mother here in Nazareth. I remember the day the letter arrived and she excitedly shared it with me. Can you imagine what Joseph wrote in his letter to his mother? lots of things I couldn't talk to you about before. You wouldn't have believed me. But maybe I can tell you now. You know, Mom, I always loved Mary. You and Dad used to tease me about her when she was still a little girl. Her and her brothers played on our street. Our families got together for dinner. But the hardest day of my life happened not that long ago. You remember that day, don't you, Mom? The trouble started after we were engaged. And we signed the marriage agreement at our engagement party. Then Mary left abruptly to visit her old cousin Elizabeth in Judea. She was gone for three months. When she got back, people started wondering out loud if she were pregnant. It was cloudy the day I finally confronted her with the gossip. Mary, are you going to have a baby? Her clear brown eyes met mine. She nodded. Who? Mom, Mary and I never acted improperly, even after we were engaged. There's no way I can explain it to you, Joseph. But I want you to know that I've never cared for anyone but you. And then she took my hands in hers and kissed each of them as if it was the last time she'd ever do that again and turned towards home. I was dying inside. The rest of the day I stumbled through my work. It's a wonder I didn't hurt myself in my wood shop. I was angry, and I pounded out my frustrations on the doorframe I was making. My thoughts whirled so fast I could hardly keep my mind on what I was doing. I, I couldn't breathe. At last, I decided just to end the engagement with a quiet divorce. I loved her too much to make a public scene. I couldn't talk to you, Mom, or anyone else for that matter. I went to bed early and tried to sleep, but her words kept coming to me over and over. I've never cared for anyone but you. I've never cared. Oh, I wished I could believe her. I don't know when I fell asleep, Mom. But I had a dream. An angel of the Lord appeared to me. His words pulsated through my mind so intensely, I can remember them as if they were yesterday. Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. That was it, Mom. That was the answer. I couldn't believe my ears. The angel gripped my shoulders with his huge hands. For a long moment, his gaze pierced deep within me. As he turned to go, I think I saw a smile on his shining face. 
no sleep after that. Oh, I tossed about in bed for a while and then got up and dressed quietly so as not to wake you. I must have walked for miles beneath the moon of the sky. The stars pricked the blackness like a thousand tiny pinpoints. A warm breeze blew in my face. I sang to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, me singing, Mum, if you can imagine that. <laughs> I told him that I'd take Mary and care for her. I told him that I would look after her and the child, no matter what anyone said. I got back home, just as the sun kissed the hilltops. I don't know if you remember that morning, Mum. I can see it in my mind's eye as if it was yesterday. You were in the yard, feeding the chickens, surprised to see me up already. <laughs> Sit down. I said to you, I've got to tell you something. I took your arm and helped you find a seat on that large rock out back. <coughs> Mom, I'm going to bring Mary home as my wife. Can you help make a place for her things? You were silent a long time. You know what they're saying, don't you, Joseph? You said at last, your eyes glistening. If your father was still alive, he'd have some words to say, I tell you. Going about like that before you're married. Disgracing the family and all. You. You and Mary have to be ashamed of yourselves. There was no way I could explain to your mom, so I didn't even try it. Unless an angel had appeared to you, you would have laughed my explanation to scorn. It's the right thing to do. Mom, I need you. You took my arm and got to your feet, and the fire was gone from your eyes. I never heard another word. No bride could have hoped for a better mother-in-law than you. Uh, Mom, after I left you, I went down the road to Mary's house and knocked her. Her, her mother glared at me when she answered the door. Uh, Loudly, harshly, she called into the room. It's Tilsif, almost spitting out my name when she said it. My little Mary came to the door cringing. She expected me to give her the back of my hand, I suppose. Her eyes were red and puffy. I can just imagine what her parents had said to her. We, we took a few steps away from the house. Pack your things, Mary. I'm taking you home to be my wife. Joseph! She hugged me. Mom, I never realized she was so strong. I told her what I'd been planning. We'll go to Rabbi Ben Ezra's house this week and have him perform the ceremony. Now, I know it was awful sudden, Mum, but I figured the sooner we got married, the better it would be for her and for me and for the baby. Mary, even if our friends won't be there, at least you and I can pledge our love before God. I think my mother will come and... Maybe your friend Rebecca, if her dad will let her? What about your parents? I could feel her tiny body shuddering as she cried quietly. <laughs> Mary, no matter what anyone says, I'm proud you're going to be my wife. I'm going to take good care of you. I promise God that. I had a dream last night, Mary. I saw an angel. I know. The anguish which had gripped her face vanished. She was radiant as we turned away from the house and began to walk up the hill together. Just then, her mother came rushing out into the yard. Wait, she called. She must have been listening from behind the door. <laughs> there were tears running down her cheeks. I'll get your father, she cried, almost giddy with emotion. We, she yelled as she gathered up her skirts. We, she shouted as she began to run to find her husband. We are going to have a wedding. <laughs>
Ah, oh, that's how it was, Mom. Thanks for being there for us. I'll write again soon. Love, your son Joseph. After Herod's death, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So Joseph got up, took Jesus and Mary during the night and went to Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and went to live in a town called Nazareth. And that, my friends, is how this boy Jesus came to live just down the road from me here in Nazareth. But you know, his story does not end there. There is more to come. For the prophet Isaiah foretold, the people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. In a few days, Joseph and Mary are taking Jesus to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. And I feel that something wonderful is going to happen when they walk in. Excuse me, friends, but I have gotten carried away with my story, and I have kept you too long. Uh, now you will not get your work finished before sundown. And I must deliver my gift. Uh, thank you for listening to my ramblings. Go. <laughs> we will meet again. Shalom. Go with God's peace, and with the revelation that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Emmanuel, God, with us. We're going to close uh, with one more song about joy. We sang it at the start, the joy of the Lord. And there's, there's so many things that, that John presented that bring joy. I was, I'm all struck. I love the part with Gabriel just because it's hilarious, but also because it, it kind of outlines how Jesus could have showed up. He could have showed up and been like, okay, I'm the boss. Everybody listen to me now. Everybody has to submit to what I'm doing. But he comes lowly. He comes gently. And most importantly, like Candace mentioned earlier, God shows up himself. 
He doesn't just send somebody. I mean, when a CEO has meetings, right, they don't show up to every meeting themselves, but they'll show up to the really, really important meetings. So God, when he wanted to meet with humanity, when he wanted to save us, he showed up for the really, really important meeting. And that brings joy. That brings joy that God himself loves you so much that he came into the world. Though being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant. He put on flesh and moved into the neighborhood and became obedient even to death for you and for me. That's Christmas. That's Christmas. That's joy that we might be forgiven, that we might have full and abundant and eternal life with Jesus. People trust in him and say, hey, Thank you, God, that you've sent this gift to pay the price that I can never pay. Thank you, God, that you've lived a life that I can never live. Would you take everything, all the sin on my account and credit it to his account, and he's going to pay the price for it on the cross? And would you take all the perfect life that Jesus lived, everything that's in his account, and credit it to me, so that when I come before you, God, you'll see me righteous, you'll see me made new, you'll see me made whole, because of what Jesus did for us. That's joy. So would you uh, join us in singing this last song? You can stand if you'd like. It's kind of a kind of a standing song if you're able, if you'd like. My song will rise, my song will rise to you. Though my heart may fail, my song will rise, my song will rise to you. While there's breath in my lungs, I will praise you, Lord. And the dead of night I will